but who ganged up here or masked up here during the early hours of the day demanding justice from uh, the school, they have dispersed. And that is because the school refused them entry into the premises to engage with uh, uh, the leaders of the school. Uh, was heavily protected. Uh, police presence was very heavy here this morning when the family came here demanding access from the school authorities, asking to why, like you mentioned, why Edward was left unattended to while he lay in the pool of blood after he was stabbed. Until over 20 minutes later, when uh, some students themselves were able to uh, transport him to the nearest health facility where, unfortunately, he passed on arrival. And they are demanding justice. What really do they want, considering that now they've dispersed from the school's premises? So, uh, exactly. What the family, what they are seeking for is answers. Now, they want to know why the teachers refused to attend to him uh, while he lay in the pool of blood. And even before he was stabbed, we understand that he ran to the teachers for shelter after uh, this person who is alleged to have stabbed him was making the advances to beat or to stab him. He ran from where the altercation was happening to where the teachers could see him. And even though he got there, the teachers did you like turn a blind eye and he was stabbed three times in the stand, one in his uh, chest, the other around his throat, and the last in his forehead. That's how come he passed on. And when he was laying down, the school still did not respond. At the moment, the family are telling me that we are yet to get any response from the school or from the family of this alleged uh, student who stabbed Edward. They are yet to get any communication or any engagement uh, with the family of the deceased boy, as we speak, Eric. And, and let, let's try and get an understanding if authorities of the school have said anything to you uh, when, when the parents besieged the area this morning. So when the incident happened yesterday, uh, we understand it happened somewhere around uh, 10 a.m. yesterday. That's when this sad incident happened. After it happened around 10 a.m. yesterday, uh, around the late hours of the day, we had the representatives from the education ministry coming to the school to engage with the school, finding out what happened and how it went. That's all we know. But today coming to the school, we're being denied access to the school's premises. We've not been able to engage with any school authority. The police are telling us that it will not be safe to do so mm. at this time, particularly in the morning when a lot of uh, anger was boiling up by the friends and family of the late Edward. Uh, Crosby, I see some activity happening around you. Let's first off take a listen to some of the relatives of the disease which you interacted with, and then we can come back to you to wrap up the conversation. He had a paper in the morning. He was done with his paper. And he came to me and was like, insist, I'm done with the paper. And I said, okay, I'm left with a few minutes. It's a final year student. Yes, yeah, she's a final year student, a computer student, junior arts theory. And he came to me and said, I'm done with my paper. And I said, okay. He told me you done with your paper and I said okay. And I told him okay, I'm also going to start my paper. Yeah, not a few minutes we heard there is some noise at the back and we asked what was noise. And then if you don't want your brother, I'll show him. So he said that I was scared because this is not something new in Uraly. What do you mean? What I mean is that we have such cases that are students fighting, students harming um, their own colleagues, students cutting their own colleagues. I have today was the, a friend made a status and I saw it, you were like, Tuga, how can you stab your own colleague? It's very bad. This thing is nothing new in the rally school. Okay, so when you went to your uncle to tell him what has, what the boy My had to do? My uncle you? was not around. The shop is just shop. I okay. came to this very shop and the incident happened and when you enter the ski, you see a small mango tree there. Okay. So from here to that mango tree is where the whole thing happened. 
Just a few minutes. I, I, know, I can't even remember. I can't even remember because it's afterwards. There are teachers in the school. There are cars in the school. No one mind. It's just... It's just the, the, the same college that you keep, they were calling it, come, 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 your brother, your brother, your brother, before I run, we went to, this is the main gate of the so that's one of the students of O'Reilly Senior High School speaking to my colleague Noble Cross Piano. Let's just take uh, a listen again to father of the deceased and then we can go back to Noble Cross Piano. You are Edward's father. Yeah. What, what happened? Yeah, uh, what happened was just the, I see my boy off to come to school. So I want us to go to work. So I'm at work and my niece called me that uh, Edward is having misunderstanding. One of the um, students is having misunderstanding with Edward. So I should come. And so I asked her, like, are there not teachers at the school? And it, she said, the teachers are not sitting there unconcerned. And what is happening is unfair, so I should come. So I said, okay, then I'm coming. So on my way, when I got to the motorway, she called that the boy that is fight, fighting with Edward, I've stopped Edward, lying down at the school premises, breathing. And the teachers are still sitting on concern. I said, wow. Then I told I said, I'm coming. So on my way, when I get to Kotobabi, she called again that there's the student, I've gathered myself and pick him up. So they are going to let me. So I should rather come to let my and meet them there. So when I drove and I reached Lekma, I went to the emergency. The doctor said, Edward had passed away. And that is it. So when they showed me the body, the boy stabbed him three times on his chest. So that led him to his death. That's all. What have the school authorities been telling you? The school authorities have not said anything from yesterday up to now. The police have not caught. The, the school authority have not caught. Even the boy who killed my son, none of the family have even reached me. That's why we are here to seek for justice for my son. What intentions do you have going forward? So that's the father of Derek. Let's touch base finally with Crosby again. Uh, Crosby, some activity there. Is it the case that uh, other individuals are being allowed into the school for possible investigations. We see a lot of police officers who came around earlier when we were speaking to you. Well, that is what it seems like. Uh, we're trying to get access into uh, the school's premises to know exactly uh, what is going on. During the morning when the media got here, we're not allowed access into uh, the premises to even engage with the, with the school's authorities. We understand it may be possible, so this is what we're going if it is possible to go inside and engage with the students, perhaps, and the school authorities, we will definitely uh, do that. The police are still, if you like, trying to find out whether the school authorities will allow us access now. Now, now we understand it, it, it could be possible. Uh, and if it is possible, Eric, uh, we'll, we'll let you know as we we'll try to enter and then have a word or two with some of the students and uh, the school's authorities on what actually happened yesterday on the back of the claims that uh, it's been made that the teachers washed on without doing anything for Edward to lose his life. Perhaps a little intervention from the school's authorities earlier would have made it possible to save the life of uh, Edward. By the way, Eric, I should also tell you that we understand this is not the first time that these incidents are mm. happening uh, in the school. When it's not the school is known for, uh, if you like, these happenings. And a lot of uh, residents around are asking that the Ghana Education Service intervenes and, if you like, uh, puts the school at the right place. Because right then. a lot of classes, a lot of fights um, have been happening at this very school. And I understand this would be the second loss of life in the school. This information we're yet to confirm. But the bottom line is O'Reilly, unfortunately, may be noted for these happenings. Crosby, we'll leave it here, even as you try to battle to get access to the school and get authorities provide some more details with regards to concerns and the accusations that have been leveled against them. Noble Crosby, and there.
And it looks like the police and, uh, you know, GS authorities are in the school to investigate the matter. We'll update you as and when new developments emerge. In the meantime, let's turn attention to illegal mining because uncovered pits by illegal miners in Wane in the Talensi district of the Upper East region has caused flooding through the Ung River with an estimated 80,000 cubic meters of water flooding the underground of large-scale mining entities and small-scale miners. 400 professional mine workers have been sent home temporarily due to the damage the flood has caused on equipment underground. Bunny Mining Community is endowed with huge gold deposits, which is a potential of positively changing the economic situation in Ghana. But illegal mining activities have taken a bigger part of the gold fortune, although poverty and unemployment is reducing due to mining activities. Well, now we're going to go to the community now. We're in the Talensi district. Our Upper East Regional Correspondent, uh, Tanko Mohamed Rabiu, uh, is joining us with a bit more on this. Uh, good afternoon to you, Tanko. What else can you report on the situation in Gwane? Thank you very much, uh, Kimini. Uh, you're right. There are hundreds of uh, alcohol mining fees uh, in this area because uh, what is happening here is a shallow mining activity with several piece dug and abandoned without uh, sealing them off. The issue is that gold deposits are easily found without going deep into the ground. So the aggregated miners succeed by moving from the from one place to another in search for the gold. Mm, what is the current state of uh, the flood in the undergrounds? And are they still illegally mining? Or, I mean, what, what's the situation on the river? Okay, uh, currently, as I visited, please, the water level uh, underground uh, is very high, especially at the uh, uh, underground mounts of the various shafts of these companies. Uh, because this is the only large-scale mining company that is currently working in that uh, area, that is uh, L International Mining, uh, as well as uh, undergrounds of small-scale miners that have been uh, submerged by this water. Yes, uh, illegal mining is still ongoing. Few details from the old river uh, due to large gold around the river. According to what the miners told me, uh, is that they don't have any place to go apart from uh, these areas, and uh, that's where they get their daily bread. So they are therefore appealing to the authorities to at least see how they can do. But uh, the deputy uh, public relations officer of L Mining, that is uh, Albert Azogu, uh, who spoke to me earlier, said the flood has affected their equipment with millions of dollars uh, uh, still counting. So we can hear from what he said. Hmm. Uh, let's take a listen and then we'll come back to our conversation. Of course, the point they hold on to is that that is their source of livelihood. But we also say um, we, we do not think that wanting to live should make you risk your life and also disturb our operations. So all we are saying is that you have to give way if we ask you to give way. And so if you are someone who is squatting in our concession and your operations does not disturb us, we may not immediately be asking you to move, especially if you are possibly finding yourself in a corner somewhere where you are uh, managing to, to survive. But as long as you want to continue to come into our underground, as long as you find our space as the space that you can find your food, then we have a challenge with it. Safely evacuate all the workers. Fortunately for us, all the workers who were underground at the time of the incident were safely evacuated and they surfaced. And then uh, it emerged that we immediately could not uh, address the issue. In fact, it took us close to three days before we were able to find a temporary solution to the problem. Mm, Tanko, uh, we also know that you were talking to some of the underground miners. What did they tell you? Yes, Governor, uh, what they told me is that uh, they keep on saying that uh, this is the only place they know, and that's why they're here. They're here some... Uh, I've been here for like 15, 20 years now. And then uh, 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 that mm, was some well. years back. 
Mm. Let's take a listen to them and then we can end our conversation. No, boy. Because I see I see me bahache. Uh huh. See, I don't know where I am. I show him, but I don't know. 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 I so we are here doing how we do the we'll survive and watch our family. Here too, it's like some water is disturbing us as we are working. So the water, I think if like government can contact with the, the contractors people so that they can see how they will do, then block the water for us to be working. Here, yeah, that's our work that we are doing. We and our mothers and everybody here, that's our work we are doing. Well, Tanko, thank you so much for bringing us the story. Upper East Region correspondent Tanko Rabiu Mohammed. Well, some members of the Minority Caucus of the Lands and Natural Resources Committee and the Wex and House and Committee of Parliament are demanding the immediate resignation of the Sector Minister Samuel Abujinapo and his two deputies over their failure to fight the menace. We'll get more on this story in a tad. But right now, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, more stories. So live here on New Central, we're staying with the subject of illegal mining and its ravages because this afternoon some members of the Minority Caucus on the Lands and Natural Resources as well as the Work and Housing Committee of Parliament are demanding the immediate resignation of the Sector Minister Samuel Abu Jinapo and his two deputies over what they say is their failure to fight the illegal mining uh, menace. Let's get onto the phone lines right now and speak to the deputy ranking member on the Lands and Natural Resources Committee of Parliament, Al Hassan Suyini, who's cast doubt on the ability of government to effectively tackle the illegal mining menace. He's joined us, like I mentioned, on phone. Honorable, many thanks for speaking to us. Government has insisted on its achievement in fighting the illegal mining menace. Yet you do not agree. You say that the minister and his deputies should be resigning. Is that what will deal with the challenge we have on our hands as a country at this particular point in time? Well, um, the line is not very clear, but uh, if I understand you, uh, I agree that indeed uh, what we are calling for is for the president uh, to uh, dismiss the minister responsible for lands and natural resources and also the minister responsible for environment. Mm. It may seem very little, uh, especially because we know that the failure is not just uh, restricted ministers of state. The failure is a failure of the entire Nana Akufadu uh, Baumia government. But since we all agree that the president who is lame that has checked out and the vice president, who is only focused on winning an election because he thinks it's possible, not because he has any grand idea to resolve the problem, cannot be removed from office. We at least expect that they will demonstrate some little bit of responsibility by firing these two you know, ministers, ministers of state who are variously responsible for the sector. And it is, it is especially important mm. that after that, they also address the state on the state of our environment. I think that we have gotten to a point where as a country, as a people, we deserve to hear from His Excellency the President on the state of our environment because our survival depends on the environment. And it is clear to us that as a result of this abysmal failure in the fight against illegal galamsey, our very survival is threatened. That is the reason why today the Ghana Water Company Limited is it's telling us that about sixty percent of our water bodies right. are, you know, polluted, and they are having to even, you know, spend much more to process potable water that are sent to our homes, and right. even that they cannot guarantee the quality and efficacy. Honourable, the House has reconvened today. We know that the House has reconvened today for that emergency sitting. Is this something that you're bringing to the, to the attention of the Speaker and demanding a bit more from government on today? Definitely, this call is an emergency one, and it is restricted to a number of issues 
that the House is called upon to discuss. But obviously, as uh, people very concerned about the threat that this uh, illegal mining is posing to our very life, uh, and especially now that we see it being done with impunity by the roadside, like we have seen in the Konongo areas, mm. like we have seen uh, even close to railway lines and in the talented areas all over the place with that level of impunity. As members of parliament very concerned, uh, we intend to address the press, uh, you know, very shortly. And in that address, we will be highlighting some of these problems and also demanding some, you know, action and responsibility from, from the government, especially the excellency, the president. And two things failed, you stated, uh, you know, the president, president. Sacks... Clearly, if for nothing at all, the people of Ghana deserve mm. a statement on the state of our environment. What, what, what happens if none of these things you're demanding uh, is done by the current administration? The second of the Lands and Natural Resources Minister and his deputies, and then uh, an address of some sort by the president. It's not inclined truth, to heed to your the demands. Truth, the, truth, the truth is that, my brother, even as I make the call, I'm not hopeful that the president will even have the courage mm. to make these dismissals because I think that he is well aware that the failure goes beyond these ministers. And the failure is a failure of the entire government. And remember, he himself, uh, you know, lied to the people of Ghana when he said he was putting his presidency on the line right. uh, uh, to make sure that this fight succeeds. Clearly, after eight failure, he has not come back to tell us anything about, you know, his presidency. All that he seems to be uh, preoccupied with is uh, winning more power and also handing over... Uh, power to, you know, his prodigy to continue with the destruction and the uh, devastation right. of our forest. Honorable, uh, one, one last thing from me to you is a question that's just coming through that as members of parliament, you can't be doing a lot more because in the various districts uh, where these illegal mining activities are taking place are areas where you supervise as members of parliament as well. You should be uh, taking some level of interest in ensuring that the districts under you as members of parliament where these illegal mining activities are taking place, at least you report and ensure that uh, it stops there. How do you respond to that? My response is that let us not, I don't think that it is ingenious, I don't think that it is, uh, you know, smart to want to put members of parliament on trial for the failure and irresponsibility of the state. Not, Clearly, not, not on yes, trial, yes, but aiding yes, the fight. Yes. Aiding yes, the fights yes, against that, illegal can mining. Can I finish? I'm saying that the state has given the coercive powers to his excellency the president. He's the commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. And beneath him, beneath him are ministers who are also clothed with authority mm. to deal with this. They can actually command police and soldiers to deal with this. They can pass policies and laws to deal with it. All they need to do is to present it before Parliament and get Parliament, uh, you know, approval right for then. those ones to be implemented. Again, they have municipal chief executives and mm. chief executives, and they have regional ministers who also share the RECSEC and the NEWSEC. They have all that it takes to make sure that we succeed in this fight against illegal mining. And so if they fail, it will be disingenuous to want to put members of Parliament on trial with the executives who have completely failed, even though they have been given all the powers that they require to make sure that we win this fight. Honorable, I appreciate that you could speak to us. I see Honorable Al-Hassan Sweeney is a deputy ranking on the Land uh, Committee in Parliament speaking to us this afternoon. I reckon we'll stay in Parliament a while longer, Kamini. Absolutely, because the House is reconvening today in a makeshift chamber at the dome of the Accra International Conference Centre. Now, weeks ago, the majority side requested that members are recalled from vacation to consider what is said were urgent bills. The majority leader then accused the Speaker of rushing the House into recess. Initially, Speaker Alban Bagwin had put off re assembling members due to a lack of appropriate space while the original legislative chamber underwent retrofitting. Uh, this afternoon, Bagwin finds himself once again defending his decision to adjourn the House on July 30th. In his opening remarks, he informed MPs of the renovation works in the chamber. TV3's Evelyn Tingma is there for us and joins us with some updates uh, on this. Uh, good afternoon to you, Evelyn. Let's talk about how, you know, 
things and work of the MPs uh, are going on in this temporary chamber? Yeah, can we, um, good afternoon. Um, I must say that the work or the proceedings started here earnestly um, around 10.30. And of course, um, proceedings have been going on uh, quite smoothly. And currently, as we speak, the Speaker of Parliament has uh, suspended the House for uh, 10 minutes. And of course, it's been more than 10 minutes. It's more than 30 minutes as we speak. And members are not back for or the speaker is not bad for the house to continue with their business. I mean, mm. Was there a reason that the speaker felt the need to, you know, reassure the house that he didn't rush them into vacation? Yes, yeah, so can we, in his opening remarks, um, he did explain that um, Parliament initially was supposed to have um, a joint proceeding or sitting um, on the 30th of July. And so um, he did that according to the, the parliamentary schedule. And so nobody should have accused him of suddenly adjourning the House on the 10th of July. And so he explained to members that that was not the case. And so um, he went ahead to also indicate that um, members should um, desist from abusing the Article 112 of the Constitution, which compels the speaker to recall the House any time and members want the speaker to do so. And so he went ahead to say that even one day that could cause some challenges for the country. And so members will resist from that. And that he went according to the parliamentary procedure to adjourn the House on that day. I see. So uh, what bills are or will be considered today? So, Kemeni, so the speaker said he uh, recalled the House based on three motions. And the first one he mentioned was a $250 million financing agreement between the government of Ghana and um, the International Development Association uh, with the World Bank. The second one has to do with the tax waivers or exemptions. And you remember this um, tax waivers came up on the floor of parliament during the last um, meeting, and it was shut down by the minority side of the House. And also, they asked to reconsider the decision that was taken by the House between, um, that was taken before the House went on recess um, on the Ghana sector recovery levy. So it's based on these three motions that the Speaker said he recalled the House mm. and consider. So they are expected to consider these three things before they rise again tomorrow after proceedings. Um, but Kemeni, as uh, yes, as we speak, um, as I said, they are on recess. But in the, the speaker's opening remarks, after his remarks, he um, gave the opportunity to the minority and the majority leaders to also make their remarks. And of course, the minority leader, Dr. Tisela, to force him, and he says regarding the tax waivers or the tax exemptions that the House has been recalled to come and consider, the minority position is that they will not agree to that tax exemption. Because according to him, if they do agree and approve that tax exemption, they will be giving away some $350 million to some crony businesses, mm. and that will not happen. And he also was concerned about the Electoral Commission voter register, which he says it is riddled with irregularities, and, and that uh, he's calling for a forensic audit into the voter registration right. and database. And of course, um, the majority leader will not agree to some of these things. That he asks that his colleagues to be circumspect with the comments they make concerning the electoral commission because um, some of these things uh, could um, would not work out well for the citizenry not to trust or to trust the electoral commission. And so, basically, um, these are some of the things that the House um, looked at before they went on, on the break. The Indeed, Evelyn, always a pleasure talking to you. Evelyn Tingma is uh, joined us from the makeshift chamber of uh, Parliament at the Dome of the Accra International Conference Centre. We'll bring you more on this in subsequent broadcasts. Right now, we'll remind you you're watching News Central live on TV3. When we come back, we'll bring you your election command centre.
And we are your election command centre. We're taking you to the northern part of the country where the flag bearer of the NDC has lashed out at the ruling government of what he describes as discriminatory cancellation of road contracts the NDC signed and had commenced in 2016. According to him, upon assumption of office, the current government halted the construction of roads awarded under the Cocoa Roads project, claiming it was auditing the contracts. After almost eight years, no adverse findings has been made against any past government official under the contracts awarded. This afternoon, John Mahama is promising the people of Amoma in the Kintampo South constituency that his next administration will not cancel any road construction currently being undertaken by the NPP administration. Kumla Kluche has more. Mekaise Amoma Kwai, 2020, Yadi Fidi Abra yawa ba mu ya de makoko roads a anka ekwanya efi amoma ekopie eh ajina ni na na contractor eguso a ye ye no koko roads abai fo fo ba ya omo se amoma ha ye nua koko nta de ni de koko roads aba na ye nua koko a se ye so ye dua kasho na kasho ye fa anko amano ni koton and five dollars a month. And see, now you're a gunner for me. And see, you're the Coco Roads buyer, you're the big bar, a moment, send a bear, you're your coin now. Trucks now, a better cash, you know, for no big up, a barber talk, cash, you know, near the crown on a man on me, a discover, gunner. And see, a bar, Sarquin, you know, you're better to us with you. Twenty twenty, you're the Fidia, the good Sarquin, so you're two about you, and one, and on best Sarquin. After I have a two hour view, and who said contractor go so now, I mean, I can't fear me and son. Now, Bibia Abbey, now, I mean, I fear me and son, and Coba say, on the Babby Gusso, fair, fair, not Bibia, a yen is in a Babbet to us, a year, sir, Mokwai, a mamma. The flag bearer of the NPP, Dr. Mahmoud Dubaumia, has announced the procurement of additional 50,000 closed circuit television CCTV cameras for the police. At an event to commission the Central East Regional Police Command in Kaswa as part of his Central Regional Campaign Tour, the, he said the CCTV cameras have become necessary to detect in real time crimes committed on streets in every district in the country. As a government, we have invested more in the police than any other government in the Fourth Republic. We've bought more vehicles, more uniforms, even three helicopters for the police for the first time in history. Going down uh, next year is to begin to support the police with CCTV cameras and across every street in every region and every district so that we can see when we sit down every movement in every street in every region in every district capital in this country and so we are bringing in 50,000 CCTV cameras that we are going to install in every region and every district. And the tiredness already telling in the voices of uh, the two leading candidates, John Mahama and Dr. Baumia. But away from them, daughter of Ghana's first president and former chair of the Convention People's Party, Samia Nkrumah, is denying claims that she's been sponsored by the governing NPP ahead of this year's general election. The allegation was made in a constituency, uh, the Jomoro constituency, during the opposition NDC's campaign there. Samia Nkrumah, who is going back for a seat as an independent candidate, says she does not belong to the NPP. Belong to. But what is best for us? What is the best combination of people that we can present to help? our country what is the best combination of people that we can present to help our country that's what you're saying you've recently been accused of being in bed with the npp oh yes it's not the first time i've been accused of many things and this is propaganda and this is yes i was surprised to see that on the launch of um, the mp for jumo's campaign i was a subject of you know of interest and that 
people were talking about me be, in, rather than touting the achievements um, of the MP. I, the, I, I'm, I say I'm surprised because I think when you are launching a campaign, you talk about your powers and your, your strengths rather and what you can do for your people. And so that gives you even an indication of how, for me, that is extreme partisanship. So if someone is not in your party, you can say anything about them. You can, you can, you know, put uh, a lot of negative propaganda, uh, um, just dump it on them. So I truly believe we have to move away from that. But is it true? This year, are you sympathizing with the governing MPP, uh, helping it's, them indirectly to break the eight? But the MPP has a candidate, so it can't be true. And yes, we are your election command center. Trust us to provide you all the details as it happens from now until December 7, and even after December 7, mm. because we'll be expecting results, declaration, and then the aftermath as well. Let's quickly scan before we get out of the studios today. And do that for us and join the 3 News WhatsApp channel. That's where you find every detail as it drops. It's a 3 News WhatsApp channel. It's a big growing family. Do well to be a part of it. That's our bulletin for you this afternoon, which came really fast today. I am Maureen Aigita. <laughs> Next is the Afternoon Show. I'm Kemini Amanobabai.